Hello and welcome to a very special match of Age of Empires 2. It is the Viper versus Tato, but this game certainly has a lot of weight behind it because this game could be one for the history books. You're about to see here on the left side, it's going to pop up the current rating of the Viper, 2696. He's four points away from reaching the watershed the 2k7 mark that would be a momentous occasion it would be the first time anyone has surpassed 2k7 on this ladder and this ladder the 1v1 ratings ladder on Vubly, has been going since 2012 so this is six years in the making here and viper would be very pleased if he can tip himself over 2k7 and uh, get that achievement under his belt. A player, of course, with many achievements under his belt, but 2K7, just another another number, another rating, and another achievement to tick off his bucket list here, it would seem. He's not going to have an easy match. He is currently playing in the yellow to the west of the map as the Koreans, but his opponent is Tato. He's playing in the red as the Britons over here, and Tato, a formidable opponent, Someone that can certainly give Viper a run for his money. And although these guys are good friends, I'm sure Tato is going to give this one everything he's got. Because I'm sure somewhere deep down, Tato probably would like to be the guy that also denies Viper the 2k7. There's certainly some banter between these guys. They're certainly good friends as well. But I don't think that changes anything going into this match. It is just a regular rated match. There's no tournament. There's no money on the line. But... The opportunity here to get past 2k7 and yes it is just a number yes it is just an arbitrary milestone but it certainly would mean a lot to viper his followers and i guess for the age of empires community it's definitely something to talk about so i want to share this game with you we're going to see if viper can make it or if he will be denied that 2k7 the map the setting the location for this match it's going to be golden hill it's a pretty unorthodox map. In fact, we've seen a lot of Arabia recently. And in fact, before we do go on to talk about the map, let's just talk about the civs real quick. Because Koreans and Britons certainly rings a bell. If you've been watching my videos lately, you'll know that the last expert game I uploaded to this channel was Viper vs. Doubt. And it was the same civs. It was Koreans versus Britons. And in that game, Doubt got himself the victory over the Viper, who was playing the Koreans then as well. So now it's Tato in the red, sporting the Britons in this game. We'll see what he can do. And this map at Golden Hill, like I say, it's a bit different. It's a hybrid map. It's got a mix of land and water, both of which are going to be important at different stages of this game. So let's have a quick look at the map in a little more detail as Tato here brings his second boar in and uh, obviously has his first dock up as well. The players start with standard resources in terms of food. They've both got two boar, they've got the regular number of sheep, they've got a berry patch and a patch of four deer as well. The difference however is in the gold and the stone. They only have one stone mine. It's got uh, five stone piles in it, so that's plenty of stone. But the gold is a little bit less, with the uh, main gold having just four tiles and the secondary gold having just three. So it's much reduced compared to a standard Arabia or uh, other standard map. Um, that does mean that they will be forced to take the gold in the center of the map at some point. There's also the relics out here, not your standard number of relics either. I can count seven right now, as well as the additional stone in the center of the map too. So grabbing the center of the map, which is a hill, which means that attacking it is going to be harder, uh, it's going to be important but not straight away. Immediately, this hill is not of too much importance. Interestingly, both players right now patrolling their opponents crossing. Want to make sure no shenanigans are going on here. They want to have good vision, make sure no one's sneaking onto the middle early on in this game. It seems like both players going for a pretty standard and similar opening build at the moment, with both of them dropping down an early dock, training a few fishing ships, and willing to fish away. Of course, the Koreans and the Britons um, fairly evenly matched when it comes to the water, but the Koreans, of course, have the turtle ship, which I wonder if we will see in this game, since the Wallaloo Kingdoms, of course, means that you don't have to actually uh, have a castle in order to make your unique unit on the water. Same goes for Vikings, same goes for Koreans, same goes for Portuguese. 
There is, however, quite a difference already. Tato here with four fishing ships, quite standard for a water map, but Viper with just two. Hinting perhaps there are some shenanigans going on, and when I look at the dock, the shenanigans are already coming into play. Five villagers loading up here into a transport ship, and this is the state of the meta right now. This is how bad it's got. You're playing on a water map, and you go for a tower rush. Let me see, is he on the stone? Of course he's on the stone. Four vills gathering stone right now, and I wonder if Tato is going to suspect this. I wonder if he'll see it coming. It's not totally crazy. This has been done in recent events. We've seen players taking uh, islands and going forward with the transport ship uh, as the Koreans dropping towers to try and catch their opponents off guard. And I'm sure Viper, I mean, we've said this word far too many times. I'm sure I'd like to get 2k7 with a masterpiece. Well, we'll see what he can do right here as his transport ship comes in. He sees the dock, of course, and he's going to try and avoid the dock. But I think he's actually going... Nope. There you go. I was going to say, I thought he was going just a bit too close there, but he's being very careful. He will actually be in the line of sight now, but it's too late. Tato will see the transport, but the villagers have already landed. Fortunately for Tato, the stone's at the back here. He can get on the stone quite quickly. And of course, he has enough stone in the bank for a counter tower to begin with. So he's going to try and wall off this left side. Counter tower here to prevent Viper coming in too far. And on the water... The fire galley is chasing the transport down. Of course, Tato will look to take down the two fish. Deny that. But right now, walling up the center of the map and looking to perhaps grab something in here. Maybe lock this down. Now, if Tato can defend this tower rush, he's actually in a very good position. He'll have map control and water control. So Viper playing a risky game going forward like this. But such is the power of the Korean tower rush. It's so strong right now that he doesn't want to... Um, doesn't want to let the opportunity slide. Viper does want to go in with the towers. Now, against Doubt, it didn't work too well. And part of the reason why his trush failed versus Doubt in that last game I uploaded was because Doubt had so many resources in the back. Now, this game, Tato certainly has resources in the back. And so far, so good. He will deny it. Viper with a quick gate to prevent, well, these villagers escaping, I assume. And uh, Tato will lose a single villager here. Maybe a second villager as well. Unnecessary to lose this one. I think he'll be fine. And he'll manually try and take that tower down with his villagers right now. Meanwhile, Fire Galley out for Viper. Wants to take the fish away from Tato. And he will succeed. Demo rafts from Tati. Oh, so close. And imagine if he'd have hit that. That would have been a catastrophe for Viper. But Tato, well known for using his demolition rafts. In this game, he's uh, pretty fond of the unit. Demolition rafts, demolition ships. He's hit a number of fantastic shots with them. And Tato now making sure, doing everything in his power to prevent this tower from going up. Takes down three villagers. And of course, he has a tower on standby here to hit any more villagers that dare venture out of that one. So it looks like Tato is in a great position right now. Uh, although with that said, actually... Viper has, in the meantime, taken the center of the map as well. We saw this tower rush here, but there was a secondary tower rush happening through the center. Tato should have the water control, though, and I believe he does. He's got a fish, one fish and chips for Tato, and three fire galleys to prevent any more action. But he could be on the shallows. He could be killing this villager as she tries to run across, and I feel like that is maybe a wasted opportunity right there, as Viper will actually put a dock up on the opposite side of the map. It's quite aggressive from Viper, but so far, Viper's killed seven, Viper's lost seven, and they are pretty even in terms of the KD, but the villager count certainly favors Tato right here with an additional three or four villagers on the map, if you, uh, well, depending how you count it, I guess. Well, it's more like two or three right now. Um, <laughs> would help if I could count. Um, but yeah, a little bit of idle time from the TC of Tato. His food income obviously suffering now that he lost the fish. He's had to force, well, he's not force dropped, but this fishing ship coming back hasn't actually provided him enough food. And meanwhile, he's force dropping off here at the mill and milling the deer as well. Viper catching up in village account now it's just one difference he's got farms down he's got berries coming in enough to keep the tc running but he's actually idling it at the moment perhaps his attention is focused on this side of the map but that tc is idle from the viper sloppy i would certainly not expect to see him idling the tc for this long and boy it's been 
a good 30 seconds by now. So uh, even Viper here, that one of the best players in the world with TC idle time, certainly something he could improve if he wants to get 2k8. I mean, it's a stretch, but uh, 2k8 could be on the horizon if he keeps it up. We'll see. Uh, dropping down another tower. He's relentlessly pushing with the towers here. He really wants to annoy Tato, but you have to question how much damage these towers have really done. It's 7 for 7 on the KD. He's still behind in villagers, and these villas on the front are idle. They're not gathering resources. Tato so far is in the clear from these towers, but if he lets the tower creep happen, if he lets Viper, if he lets Viper go unchecked, I should say, then he's gonna have a problem on his hands because as the game goes on, oh, demo ref, beautiful. And that's what Tato was looking for earlier. Two villager kills right there. That's what I would call a masterpiece. Really nicely done. And like I say, Tato's so aware. He's always thinking about these opportunities and looking for just the slightest misplay from Viper or misstep from Viper and an opportunity to, I mean, a demo raft. The fact that he has a demo raft out right now shows great foresight. The fact that he knows villagers' units are going to be crossing these shallows and the demo raft being in the right place at the right time shows why Tato is a top class player and a new member of Tyrant, of course, as well. He really gels with the Tyrant team. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing Tato playing in the ECL with his team Tyrant. But right now, it doesn't matter about team affiliation. It is a one-on-one. -on -one. And these guys are going at it. But jeez, Tato, what is this? I've got to question this. He's given up the wood line. He sent all of his villagers to the back and... That's the kind of reaction that Viper does want to get. Forcing the Vils to go idle. And Tato, I don't know why he's not placed a defensive tower already. But that does seem like a pretty poor play from him there. I would say letting this tower creep get this far is too far. It's nearly in range of his stone. And if he can't protect his stone, he's in big trouble. Now, he's got to come forward. Now, he's got to risk villager lives. As these villagers at the back decide what to do. They're going to finish the tower. They're going to hop into this one here. Tato certainly knows he wants to try and wall Viper out. But his villagers now coming under fire. And a lot more idle villagers from Tato here. As Viper's towers do the damage. And there you go. Villager going down. Other villagers getting pretty low. And yeah. Tato can't realistically fight this at the moment. Interestingly, this is another villager. And Viper does not actually have a third villager actually going down for Tato there. So they're actually neck and neck on villagers right now. And Tato, uh oh, he's trying to load up in the transport ship. Viper's saying, come here. But I don't know if he's going to catch him. It's too late now. Tato saying, this is so dumb. He's not so happy about this. The towers have just gone too far. <laughs> he's going to try and counter Trush. But with what stone is he going to do it? I don't know. At the moment, he's having to build a market. He's got gold. He might be able to buy some stone with that. But he will successfully and safely land his villagers across and uh, you can see it says here Tato bought a hundred food which is interesting maybe he's worried about his food income he certainly doesn't have any food income right now no fish no berries no deer nothing <laughs> reminiscing there the nothing nothing video <laughs> oh man but yeah Tato just uh, doesn't have any food income so TC will go idle if he doesn't buy food it's, it's a very awkward situation Viper pulling himself into the lead I'd say right now as both players try to repair their fire galleys looks like Tato will keep his fire galley alive and kill this one maybe yes yes no oh it's a villager fight damn this is dirty both players playing so dirty right now villager fighting both of them repairing fire galleys next to each other it's a mess it's an absolute mess and tatty now having to try and rebalance his economy a little bit here he's got a lot on wood a lot on gold but nothing on food could throw some farms around this mill for example i think that would be a solid idea it's a bit risky close to the shore but i mean it's the best he's going to get right now as he can't really farm this north side of his TC. He could maybe put a couple of farms here and here on this right side. But doesn't seem to be too interested in that. This is going to be a futile attempt at a tower drop. Viper knows it's coming. He sees it coming from a mile away. And uh, his tower there, not going to complete. He's going to have to hop into the transport ship and sail away. Fortunately, he had the angle. And Viper couldn't hit the transport ship with the tower. 
Otherwise, that would have been two more dead villagers from Tato. I mean, miraculously, amazingly, Tato is still staying ahead in village account, but the farming for Viper is certainly much less of a problem. He's already got five farms down. He's still taking the berries. He's even taking the deer now as he thinks about potentially going up to the castle age. He's kind of stabilized here in the feudal age. Tato going back on the water, deciding that he needs to fish a little more to support his economy here. But I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see Viper hitting the castle age first in this game. He certainly has the eco set up in a much better position right now to do it. But Tato will quickly be seeding farms down. He sees another attempted tower drop from Viper. It's four villagers building the tower. He's got four to build a defensive tower. And he knows it's not going to be enough because the Koreans build towers 30% faster, of course. And Viper's already moving on to the second tower here. And this is what I mean. You don't leave it unchecked because one tower leads to another. And before you know it, you're zoned out and you've got big problems. So Tato here going to be able to uh, gather what he can off those farms before they are inevitably denied and that is a huge problem that's 200 and what is that that's 60 120 240 wood wasted on those farms and very little food gathered from them before they've been denied here tato not having a good time in this one but he is he is using that market he's using and abusing that market selling a lot of wood if we look at the market price for wood it's still 57 that's decent and it's enough for him to buy food, sell wood, get to the castle age. He'll click up now. And that is with the use, extensive use of the market. Viper only just built a market and he's ready to click up au naturel. He's not uh, not fiddled the books. He's not um, you know, done any shady, shady dealings here on the side. He's done it legit. And uh, both players actually going up to the castle age on 41 villagers. Very close in village account, and I'd certainly say Tato is still in it. But Viper has been nothing short of a nuisance this game. As Tato gets a much needed victory on the water here, he's got his military count a little higher. Viper there, minus two military. Overlay just having a little bit of a, uh, a panic there. <laughs> Not sure what's going on, is it? But uh, that's fixed now. Eight to zero. And Viper... No military on the map, no water control, but he does have towers down. And that is going to be a problem because these towers are going to become guard towers once they reach the castle age. And, well, that just gives him more area of, of, of sort of control. He's going to have more damage, he's going to have more range, and uh, it's going to be a problem for the Vipe, uh, for Tato, sorry. As Vipe, Tato loads up another transport ship. But, uh, yeah, I've said the village accounts are even. But having the water is a huge advantage. And Tato's got eight fish up in the north here. So that is something that he can certainly cling on to. And uh, use as a means to try and get back into this game. I wouldn't say he's particularly been out of this game. But it certainly did look like he was going through a rough patch a bit earlier on. So uh, Viper's about to get the guard tower. We're going to see that in just a second. And we'll see if it becomes you know, in range of anything awkward here. There's the extra range coming in. Extra damage. And um, doesn't look like it's causing Tato too many troubles just yet. Maybe Bodkin Arrow will give him a bit more reach. And that is being researched right now. But Viper doesn't have water. That's going to make things a little bit awkward. He does, however, have the center of the map. And he can certainly fortify the center of the map quite nicely with, well, believe it or not, more guard towers. And he can obviously uh, try... And prevent Tato from getting the additional gold and stone this game. He can also try and protect his docks with some uh, with some towers as well. But it doesn't look like that's going to be too successful. What's in here? It's a turtle ship. I've only gone and called it Viper. Double turtle ships right now. And do not want to be on the wrong side of those. 200 HP. 50 attack damage. And sure, they're expensive. Sure, they're very slow. But they can take an absolute beating. Six melee armor, and that is important because fire ships do melee damage, so they are very, very poor against turtle ships. You can see here, they don't do quite as much damage as they would versus uh, something like a galleon, for example. So they're a little nerfed, to say the least. Tato here, wondering what on earth he's going to do versus the turtles now. Three turtles on the map. Viper can't 
can't really afford many more. He's just about able to, uh, to get them going. But he's prioritizing ballistics here. And that's going to be an important tech because those cannonballs uh, are... Oh, sorry, not the cannonballs. The, uh, the guard towers are going to be that much more accurate at hitting moving targets. That means ships on the water. That means villagers that come into range. Uh, as far as I'm aware, the ballistics doesn't affect turtle ships. I can't imagine it does, but I might be wrong. If it does affect turtle ships, I apologize. Um, even more reason, of course, for Viper to get the ballistics tech. It's so rare to see this unit, but let's see what the demo ships can do. Two demo ships, and it's still limping back to the dock. It's alive, and Viper, of course, is doing everything he can to keep these guys going. Sending them back to repair as well, and I think that's a really smart move. Here's another demo ship. Here's another fire ship. What will it do? Still above half health after the demo explodes, but here's another one. Tato here certainly needs to put those demo ships to good use. They, they just don't go down. Look at that. The first, the first one falling. But what an effort Tato's had to put in to take that first turtle ship down. The second one. Perhaps going to fall. Oh, it's so close. But there's the tower. He does get it at the last second. Viper with the repairs on that turtle ship there. And Tato nearly, nearly didn't get it. But the, I think the fire ship actually w went down. And the projectile, the fire, was still going through the air. And that's what finished the ship off. It doesn't get much closer than that. Tato now, though... All too aware of the guard tower presence and certainly doesn't want them to become keep. I mean, the problem just gets worse the longer you leave it unchecked. You know, this is why you have to go to the doctors when you think you might have a problem. Because the longer you leave it, the worse it could potentially be. And I certainly know that from first-hand experience. I'm uh, now partially deaf in one ear and have no taste on the right side of my mouth. Because when I was younger... I uh, didn't go to the doctors in time, and an ear infection got the better of me. Don't let it happen to you. But uh, same story goes for guard towers. You don't want them to become keep, because then you've got even more trouble on your hands. Viper doing masonry. Buffing the guard towers up a little more, giving them a little bit of extra life here against these rams. But uh, so far, Tato throwing a lot of demo ships at these turtles, and they seem to be having a hard time taking the demo ships out actually so i guess we could praise tato for his micro there let's see if he can get this one it's close he'll get it bada boom and down it goes now the trades looking pretty good for viper still 34 kills 26 deaths but of course viper's units the turtle ships are a lot more expensive i've not done the math and i guess at the end of this video i can do the math and we can actually figure out how valuable it is um, to take down a turtle ship with like two or three demos because that's kind of the the number that he's having to use right now to take these guys out is it a, a value trade for tato or is it actually working in viper's favor as this game goes by now tato i've noticed has a second tc out here and he has had for a while he's also got his third tc coming up on this right side which is still in range of this TC, uh, tower here but uh he does want to get the villager production going as well. Viper meanwhile has a TC in the middle and he's also got a TC on the wood. So for the long term you've got to look at this and think well Viper's surely got the advantage right now. He's got the middle of the map and the longer this game goes on the harder it's going to be to get the middle back because Viper's fortifying it. He's got the guard towers, he's got the castle, he's even taking the time now to grab the relics two of which are inside this monastery. And I believe five still left to collect. And he should be doing that with this monk. A little bit uh, a little bit dozy there, Viper. But, but yeah, the, the turtle ship seems to be getting the better of Tato. And I think the best way for Tato to take this game now might be some kind of assault on the land. But he's calling it. Oh my goodness, he's calling it. Tato doesn't even go for a last hurrah here. He just calls it. He's feeling worn down. He's feeling like he just doesn't have an answer to the turtle ships. And he's kind of right in a way. These turtle ships are such a pain to deal with. And he's feeling like right now he's just kind of being squeezed. And he knows that Viper has the middle of the map. He knows he just can't get the economy together to produce enough ships to maintain and lock down the water control. So well played by Viper there and I think 
it just goes to show that the Koreans, now you don't need a castle to build the turtle ships. Uh, just how valuable and viable those turtle ships can actually be. They are beasts. They are tanks on the water. And they've got a pretty damn sexy sprite as well. But huge congratulations to the Viper with that GG. He will go above 2k7. I think he got 9 points from this game, which puts him at 2,705 points. It's a new record. It's a new landmark milestone. And as I say, it's maybe arbitrary, but it's certainly something to talk about. And uh, he did it here with the Koreans, no less. Now, the Koreans, they need they need some kind of, of uh, a change, I think. I mean, it's too one-dimensional right now the Koreans are tower rushing on water maps that's how the state of the matter is looking at the moment and we have to do something about it in my opinion uh, you might disagree you might think towers are the best thing in the world but uh, from a sort of competitive standpoint the towers are taking over and they are very very good but uh, I think or I can say in fact that there will be a tower nerf coming soon to HD uh, in the official balance patch that's coming soon. I uh, don't know when that's going to be released, but we will be implementing those balance changes into the Escape Champions League before they are implemented into the HD edition. So for the Escape Champions League, there will be some changes to the balance of the game and Towers will receive a nerf and more info about that will be posted on AOE Zone soon. But once again, congratulations to the Viper. He makes it past 2k7. And uh, he does it against Tato as well. A formidable opponent. And uh, I've got to say, I feel like he did it with style. Using those turtle ships. And um, one final thing I wanted to look at here. The cost of the turtle ship. Of course, you're looking at 180 wood and 180 gold. That's extremely expensive. And a demolition ship. Well, how much is that costing? Having a look here. The... Uh, <laughs> So the Koreans obviously don't get demolition ships, but you can see a demolition raft is 70 wood and 50 gold. So if it takes three demolition rafts to take down a turtle ship, which I assume it does. I mean, you could probably average it out as two demolition rafts and a shot from a fire galley because the demolition raft does 100 damage and the uh, turtle ship has 200 health. But the armor prevents the demolition raft from doing full damage. So it takes technically three demolition rafts to kill a turtle ship but two and a little poke from a fire galley is enough. And I, I'd say that actually Tato probably could have traded cost effectively versus those turtles. The problem is he didn't really have the economy to do enough production from his docks. I think he needed at least four docks there and he needed a lot more production of demo rafts and fire galleys if he wanted to handle the turtle ship threat. And I think he would have been able to do it cost effectively had he had the economy to support it. So there you go guys, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up if you did, subscribe if you want to see more content, and I will see you all next time, thanks for watching.